CataractCoach.com, Cataract Quiz. Why is the IOLD centered? Hmm, let's analyze this interesting case. Now, the patient was sent to our guest surgeon in the immediate post-op period for an early dislocation or sunsetting of the IOL. You can see this is the patient's right eye and the surgeon is sitting temporally. Now, it looks like the capsule rexus is intact. It looks like a good-looking rexus. Now, the surgeon is going to go in here and dissect with viscoelastic, a dispersive viscoelastic, to help open up the capsule bag and help dissect the IOL free from the bag. Now, we can't see the entire IOL. We see the optic. We see part of the haptics. But as the viscoelastic goes in, the key here is to really separate that anterior and posterior leaflet of the capsule bag. That's a very important step. And remember, if you're further along in the healing period, that can fuse. And you can have fusion of the anterior to posterior capsule, and that'll make it hard to open up the bag. Now we can see, look at that, the trailing haptic. The bottom of your screen there is broken or amputated. Now that can happen if the lens was being injected at the time of surgery, and the trailing haptic got stuck in the injector and it was forced through, it can amputate off. These acrylic lenses are not that strong. You can, they're not indestructible. So around rotating the lens around, really getting it freed up, I like that technique. And now this is gonna be easier to remove from the eye. Are there other options? I think the best option is going to be an eye well exchange. Could you do something else? Well, in a three-piece lens, you could put the haptics in the sulcus and then capture the optic through the rexus, and that would keep it in place and keep it held securely. But I think the better part of judgment, certainly in this case, with a single piece of acrylic lens, is going to be to explant the lens. So here's being brought up out of the bag, and that large haptic's out. Now the amputated haptic, be careful, that edge could be sharp, and it could damage the posterior capsule. So this is why that viscoelastic is so crucial here. Now you can use a two-handed technique. You really want to take your time and get the lens up out of the capsule bag. Now, you can use our twist and out technique, which we've shown here before, to remove that lens. Or you can cut it out of the eye as well. You can cut it in the anterior chamber. Here now, the lens is being grasped with micrograspers through the paracentesis. And then that's a getting a good hold on it. And now it looks like more viscoelastic. And I'm guessing we're going to cut this lens in half. Yeah, they're the micro scissors. Now, another option you can do, which I recommend, if you're going to use these micro scissors in the eye, those sharp tips of the scissors will easily puncture the posterior capsule. So you may want to leave the old lens up in the anterior chamber and put the new lens in the capsule bag first. That way the new lens is protecting the posterior capsule. So if you do get loss of viscoelastic or shallowing of the anterior chamber, or those scissors go a little bit more posterior than you think, you're not going to damage the posterior capsule. So that's my advice here. If you're going to use the scissor method, put the new lens in first then cut out the old one. You can certainly do it without, like we're doing in this case, but you've got to be just very cautious to keep the viscoelastic in the eye, keep the eye inflated, keep the posterior capsule pushed back. So now the lens is being brought up. At the, this point, probably the best move is to bring one haptic outside the eye. That'll give you something to grab onto. So here grabbing the optic and then um, pulling that. Oh, no, micro scissors again. Now micro scissors going in to cut it. Yeah, so I would have pulled the one haptic outside the incision first just to give you something extra to grab, makes life a little easier. And then now you can get that piece lifting it up a little bit and now get the micro graspers through the main incision and this can be expanded pretty easily. So, and the key take home lesson here is not to wait. If you have a patient with a problem like this, address it sooner rather than later. So then there's the second half coming out of the eye now, you may want to talk to the original surgeon, make sure that there isn't that extra piece of broken haptic stuck in the eye somewhere. And here are the two pieces that, that um, Dr. Rohr cut off, putting them together outside the eye and making sure you have all of it. That looks great. And now, of course, the, the replacement eye oil can be placed in the bag. You can also use this opportunity, since you're re it, to adjust the eye oil power if you need to. If the patient ended up a little bit myopic in the post-op period, you can adjust the eye oil power down. Or if the patient was a little hyperopic, you could slightly adjust the eye power up. Here comes the new lens going nicely in the capsule bag. Key here, now the pupil has come down a little bit, a little bit of meiosis there because of all the intraocular manipulation needed for the lens removal. Just make sure the lens, like in this case, is beautifully positioned and completely within the capsule bag. You don't want to have that one haptic sitting in the sulcus. 
At the end here, you can just seal up the incisions and call it a day. So really nice case, important take home message. If there is a problem with the early dislocation of your lens, you gotta figure out why. It could be like this with a broken haptic, or it could be more commonly one haptic in the sulcus one in the back.